I'm a bit of a penny pincher. I try to stick to the bare essentials when grocery shopping, and I spend most of my free time spending money in other ways. I sell things, look for odd jobs on Craigslist, and I take surveys online. It's more than likely due to those surveys that I've ever received a mysterious package in the mail. Allow me to explain. I take countless surveys online that range from questions about my shopping experience to very intrusive personal queries. After roughly 30 surveys or so, most sites will send you some money. Anywhere from a dollar to five dollars. I mostly get two dollar bills. It's tedious work, but if you have nothing else to do, why not make some extra cash? And like I said, I'm a penny pincher. It's not like I'm greedy or anything, I just feel more comfortable knowing that I have a good chunk of money to fall back on in case of an emergency. Now, because of these surveys, I've typed my address into a lot of websites. As such, I received an overwhelming amount of junk mail. Between the money from the surveys and never needing firewood in the winter, it's worth it. One day, however, I received a package. The package was wrapped in leather, something I'd never seen come through the mail before. Embossed in the upper left corner was a rather impressive logo. It seemed that the mystery package was from a company called Syntheticorp. Initially, I thought there was some sort of mix-up at the post office, but my name and address were right there on the package, embossed like the logo. I asked my wife what she thought of it, but she offered no insight. After seeing it, she grew excited and tried pressuring me into opening it. In her defense, the thing did look important, I guess? Like whatever was inside of it was at least expensive. After fending off my curious wife and mulling it over for a few moments, I decided it would be best to not open it just yet. I assumed that this synthetic corp accessed my address in the same manner that all the other junk mail companies did. After all, I did give my address away to various outlets daily. Perhaps the package was a more elaborate form of the usual scams that made their way into my mailbox. It was more than likely harmless, however, normal junk mail is one thing, packages are another. I chose to do a little research before tearing it open. In googling Syntheticorp, I found that there were multiple agencies using the moniker. None of them seemed like scam manufacturers, but then again, they never do. I decided to call each of them and ask about the package. A few phone calls later and I was back at square one. None of the Syntheticorps I had called were the ones that sent me the mystery box. One of the guys who answered the phone even seemed angry that I was calling, as if the number should not have been widely available. In any case, I was still dumbfounded by the package. I so badly felt the need to open it, but I wanted to also feel safe doing so. For all I knew, it could have been a bomb. Not likely, but not completely out of the realm of possibility, especially in this day and age. I spent the next couple of hours on Google, looking for the company that sent me this damn thing. I needed anything that would put my mind at ease, just enough to cross that threshold, allowing me to open it and reveal its contents. After scouring thousands of results, I found something. There was one complaint on one review site for a company called Syntheticorp. I scrolled down to the comment in question, and this is all it said. Don't open it. What? Don't open it? Did they mean this package? I couldn't wrap my head around what this meant. Aggravated, I threw my keyboard aside and I went to bed. A few days passed. After reading the alleged complaint from a random review site I visited, I was more than a bit hesitant to open the thing up. In fact, I almost put it out in the garbage. Out of sight, out of mind, as the old saying goes. The only thing that kept me from doing this was my curiosity. Because of this, I left it in my car. I tried one more time to forget about it, but it was not a simple task. I kept wondering about what might be waiting for me inside the package. An invitation to a secret society, a priceless oddity passed on from stranger to stranger, or some other type of treasure. I couldn't help but fantasize about it. I did this so much that opening it became an inevitable conclusion. Noticing that my car hadn't exploded yet, and thinking a little more clearly about the situation, I decided that taking a peek inside the package would be a harmless venture. After all, the complaint I'd seen could have been about any of the other dozen synthetic corps out there. 
or more likely, it was a fake review. Either way, it was nothing more than an eerie coincidence. At least that's what I told myself in an effort to justify my desires. My curiosity demanded PlayStation. On the day in question, I arrived home from work and brought the leather-bound box inside. I placed it on the kitchen table and stared at it. I told my wife about my plans to open it and she demanded that I wait for her to get home before doing so. I told her that I might. Truth be told, I couldn't. I needed to solve the mystery, if only to satisfy my hunger for answers. I grabbed the damn thing and I attempted to rip it apart. The leather was tightly bound, but with some brute force and a little bit of sweat, I was able to penetrate some of the hide. I fought it for a few minutes, tearing off pieces in time. That's when my wife walked in. I knew you wouldn't wait for me, you impatient bastard, she exclaimed. You know I can't wait for anything. You think you could give me a hand over here? She scoffed at me but rushed over to help, just as curious as I was. It took us nearly half an hour, but we managed to get most of the leather off. Beneath it was a small wooden chest. Excited, my wife jumped the gun and attempted to open it. Her actions were futile as it seemed to be locked. It looked like we were back to square one, but I noticed something etched in the wood, below the keyhole. It said, house key. My wife and I looked at each other in confusion. I thought about it for a moment, and I hesitantly reached for my keys. I looked over at my wife and we chuckled, but it quickly turned into a nervous laugh, and then silence. I tried the key, and in utter disbelief, the lock opened. There was only one thing left to do. I opened the box up, and looked inside. My wife and I stared, equally dumbfounded by the reveal. I could neither surmise its meaning nor did I know what to do next. It was baffling. Inside the box was a live rabbit. A live freaking rabbit. Next to the rabbit was a scrap of paper. I picked it up and I read it. Do not read out loud or you will suffer the consequences. You have one minute to act. Go into the kitchen, grab a large knife. Proceed to kill a rabbit or your wife will die. This is a promise. Do not tell her about the note. Burn it after completing the task. The clock is ticking. Below the text was a picture of my wife sleeping in bed. I'd never seen that picture before. Without hesitation, I ran to the kitchen. I grabbed the largest knife I could find and hurried back over to the rabbit. I stabbed it multiple times until I knew it was dead. I expected my wife to scream, but she didn't. Instead, she asked a question. What are you doing? I looked over at her apologetically. I can't tell you. Please, just trust me. We'll have to bury it in the yard. Bury what? she asked, sounding a bit confused. The rabbit, I said. What rabbit? she asked. The one right here, I gestured toward the bloody corpse in the box. My wife shot me the weirdest look before speaking again. Hun, the box is empty. I slowly handed my wife the scrap of paper. She looked down at it and then back at me. There's nothing on it. It's blank. Hun, are you okay? All of a sudden, I felt dizzy. I looked at the paper in my wife's hand, and it was indeed void of any writing. I then looked over at the box. The rabbit was gone. A knot formed in the pit of my stomach as my legs gave out. Lightheaded and confused beyond all measure, my body hit the kitchen floor with a loud thud, and I involuntarily shut my eyes. I passed out within an instant. I woke in the comfort of my bed, feeling groggy and sore. My wife was sitting beside me with a troubled expression on her face. She was more than a little worried, both for my physical and mental health. Oh, thank God, are you alright? she asked. I'll be fine. How long was I out? About 20 minutes. I was about to call 911. What the hell happened? she asked. I changed the subject from my untimely descent to the box. I asked her if she truly saw nothing, in which she replied, no, nothing at all. We discussed it a little further, and while she agreed that my house key opening the box was weird, she figured that the package was some sort of misguided prank. She said she called the post office in the morning for more information. While conversing about the package, I was able to convince my wife that the strange actions in the fall were due to exhaustion, having overexerted myself at work. I conveniently left out the details of the note. I didn't want her thinking I was a lunatic suffering from hallucinations, even if I was. 
She seemed to buy my story, and that was that, until the following day. After a much-needed good night's rest, I woke up the next day feeling refreshed and ready to take on the world. I recalled what happened the night previous, but I decided it would be best not to dwell on the uncertainties. My best course of action, I thought, would be to forget the whole thing ever happened. I was a sane individual, after all. The events that transpired the night before truly were a product of being overtired. Yes, that explanation sat well with me. While driving to work with a newfound sense of well-being, the illusion of sanity I clung to shattered abruptly. I adjusted my mirror at the red light and noticed something laying across my back seat. It was the rabbit, dead as could be, staining my upholstery with its pungent blood. I jumped and looked back at the seat. There was nothing there. A horn blurred at me from behind, causing me to jump a second time. The light had turned green and I was holding up traffic. I quickly adjusted myself and drove forward, trying to gather my wits as I did. Unfortunately for me, it wouldn't be that simple. I kept looking in my mirror thinking I'd see the rabbit again, but I didn't. I managed to calm myself down and convince myself once again that I was sane and that it was just a trick of the eyes. And the dozens of dead rabbits on the side of the road as I passed on my way to work? That was just a coincidence. Surely, I wasn't crazy. I arrived at work a bit frazzled and made my way inside. The place was oddly vacant for a Saturday, but I ignored this and walked over to my office. The lack of life made sense when I opened the door. Surprise! All of my coworkers had piled into my office for some sort of celebration. They all wore festive hats and had party horns in hand. Clapping ensued as I entered the room. Before I could ask what this was all for, my boss walked over to me. Happy five years with the company. You've done great things here and we all wanted you to know how much we appreciated the work that you do. Take some time to kick back and relax. You've earned it. I heard a bottle of champagne pop in the corner of the room. Still on edge from the ride over, I jumped. Everyone laughed. My boss's laugh was the loudest and the most comical, which caused everyone else to laugh even harder. And then, I joined in. For a few moments, my worries vanished. I forgot all about the stupid package and the weird ride to work. It was nice, but nice things don't last. Once the laughter stopped, my boss put his hand on my shoulder and spoke again. By the way, we got something for you. Hope you like it. He walked over to my desk and everyone stepped away to reveal my gift. Well, what do you think? There, laying on my desk, was a dead rabbit. My boss began cutting into the rabbit with a knife and passing around pieces of its flesh to my coworkers. I hope you like chocolate, he said. Maybe the thing my boss was cutting into truly was just a cake but I was still shaken by what I was witnessing. Here you go, the best piece. My boss handed me the rabbit's head on a paper plate. That was the last straw. I dropped the plate and ran out of the building, got into my car and left. I couldn't be sure what was going on, but I knew I couldn't be at work. As such, I sped home, ignoring all of the rabbit carcasses I passed along the way. I needed to rest off whatever it was that ailed me. I arrived home and stormed through the front door, startling my wife who was sitting on the couch reading a book. You're home early. Everything all right? She asked. I'm taking a sick day. I don't feel so hot. I almost made it up the stairs when my wife stopped me. Oh, I called the post office. They said that the man who sent you the package will be there to meet you at 2 p.m. What? Who sent it? I asked. They didn't say. That was all they told me. That was bizarre. I didn't even know the post office had the power to arrange such a meeting. Something wasn't adding up. But then again, it made about as much sense as anything else that had happened. I decided it would be best to meet this mystery person. Maybe then I would have some answers. I slept for a few hours and woke up to a bunch of missed calls from work, as well as a text from my boss that said, Sorry, next time we'll get vanilla. I looked at the time. It was 1.35 p.m. That was my cue to throw on my shoes and head out. I didn't want to miss my impromptu meeting with who I could only guess was the CEO of Syntheticorp. I drove down to the post office and quickly made my way in. There were a bunch of people in there picking up mail and sending out packages, but I couldn't be sure who it was I was meeting. 
Noticing that I looked lost, an older gentleman walked over to me. Ah, there you are. The man then snapped his fingers as if by magic, everything stopped. What I meant by this is everyone stopped moving and silence filled the room. Everything was frozen somehow. Baffled, I looked over at the man for answers. What's going on here? Well, I was hoping that we could find out together. I had no idea what the man was talking about, so I remained silent like the rest of the room. Oh, where are my manners? Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Grovewood, but you can call me Doc if you like. Do you work for Syntheticorp? I asked. Yes, as a matter of fact I do. One answer was mine so far, but it wasn't much. I needed to press him for more information. Tell me, Doc, what the hell is going on here? I'm sorry to say, but there's no simple answer. I will, however, try my best. I just ask that you keep an open mind and bear with me. Dr. Grovewood cleared his throat and then elaborated. The life you know and hold dear is nothing but a simulation. None of this is real, not even you, technically speaking. You are a synthetic life form created by Syntheticorp. You are currently in a lab hooked up to a computer, the one running the simulation. You're being tested for various things. We need to do this on all of our new models before entering the production stage. You mean to tell me, please let me finish. I bit my tongue so I could hear the rest of his outlandish story. When a round of testing is complete, we then proceed to wake you up, so to speak. But therein lies the malfunction. We've tried waking you up several times, but you can't seem to break free from the delusion that this is your life. You've become hysterical upon waking and seem to believe that everything in this simulation is real, and the real world out there is not. Though I didn't believe a word he was saying, I kept listening, if only out of morbid curiosity. If you keep waking up like that, it'll cause irrevocable damage to your programming. That's why we sent you the package. What do you mean? I asked, now a little more invested in the story. We introduced the package into the simulation to try to invoke lucidity. You see, the world is not unlike a dream. It's our hypothesis, if we can convince you that you're dreaming while asleep, so to speak, then we can jolt you awake without causing any further damage. Does that make sense? I remain both dubious and silent. So we started off with an odd package, not completely absurd but still strange. Then, when you opened it, you found something even stranger, and on top of that, you were the only one who could see it. Take a look outside. I slowly turn my head and I look out of the post office window. To my amazement, there are thousands of dead rabbits piled up in the parking lot. I couldn't even see my car. Do you understand now? We thought that if we introduced enough absurdities into your life, then you'd realize that you were in a simulation and snap out of the funk that you're in. They had to send me in because it didn't seem to be working. You're too stubborn, it seems. We need to wake you up now so that we can promptly tackle this glitch that's keeping you anchored to this reality. I turned back to Dr. Grovefield, astonished at what he was trying to sell me. I was close to buying it, but not quite. It would explain everything that's happened, but I wanted to make sure. Just as I was about to ask more questions, Dr. Grovefield spoke again. That's all, folks. What? I asked, dumbfounded. I looked at Dr. Grovefield closely and noticed that he had become frozen, just like everyone else. That's when everything started fading. I could feel myself slipping from one world into the next. I woke up in the comfort of my bed and noticed Porky Pig on my TV along with some end credits. Given that it was my favorite cartoon growing up, I always put on Looney Tunes DVDs before bed to help me sleep. It worked like a charm. I got up out of bed and then something hit me. I started remembering the crazy dream I had. As the details came flooding back, I realized something else. I grabbed the TV remote and I restarted the last episode of Looney Tunes that had played. It was a typical episode where Elmer Fudd was chasing down Bugs Bunny. I smiled. My smile turned into a laugh when everything sunk in. I thought about the weird package, the rabbit that I had killed, and the dock. Some of the episodes must have leaked into my dream. My brain used a few of the details and strung together a crazy narrative to fill in the blanks. Amazing.